volunteer, call 352-625-7377 or visit forestanimalrescue.org. Will you help? Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. I don't really want to mix um, health with politics, but it, it was an, it was an, it was forced upon us uh, a few years ago when we were debating the the health uh, the healthcare laws and the changes in the healthcare system and politics. And uh, I was one of the first to question the the intelligence of, of all of that. But I'm telling you, I know some people, and um, I hate to sound like I'm being hypocritical. If you listen to an old tape of me. I'm being hypocritical to that old me because I've changed my mind about it because I know some people who absolutely wouldn't be getting health care right now if it wasn't for the fact that those health care laws were put into place. And I'm not trying to do anything political other than to say that now with another presidential election upon us, we do have um, a lot of people concerned what's going to happen. Some people want it to change. Some people want it to go uh, to be completely repealed. Uh... Uh, let's find out uh, from somebody who would know more than any of us. Dr. John Ward is on the phone. He is the first medical director of the Public Affairs Department at the Mayo Clinic. He's a lieutenant in the uh, Medical Corps of the United States Naval Reserve. He received the U.S. Navy Achievement Medal. He's a radiologist, and he's going to talk to us about the results from the Mayo Clinic National Health Checkup Survey. And uh, Dr. John Ward, good morning, sir. What an honor to have you on our show. Are you there? Doctor? What happened, Robin? I don't know. The phone is still there. Doctor, you there? Good morning, doctor. Hello. I am here. Can oh, you hear me? Oh, live? there you are. Now we hear you. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if you were able to hear the intro or oh, not. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Sounds like I did. Sounds well, like I was able a, to hear you. I'm glad you're here, able to hear me now. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like there's a big delay, so let me apologize for that because that'll make it seem like we're talking over you and we don't intend to be rude. But thank you for being on the air with us. Well, it's terrific to be here. Is is the uh, the um, the survey that you're going to report on? Is it done, or is it in the in the process? The survey is completed, and it's actually our second survey. We completed our first survey of American health consumers in early 2016, and this is our follow-up survey, asking American health consumers about all things related to health: cancer, brain health, sleep patterns, and even their feelings on the upcoming election. Okay, and that's uh, can, can I ask you to comment on that part first? The the uh, because I was I was the guy who would say uh, that it was a bad idea, but now I'm tell- now I've changed my mind. I think it wasn't such a bad idea. Maybe some. Somebody could argue we need to, you know, amend it a little bit. I don't know, but it doesn't seem like such a bad idea at this point. Well, I did hear your intro, and I think it's important to remember that the Affordable Care Act was really a good first step in allowing um, Americans to have health care coverage. What Americans are now saying is that, in fact, three-quarters of Americans will make their determination about a, health, about a candidate, a presidential candidate, based on the fact that they will consider access to health care, the affordability of health care, and the quality of health care that will be delivered in their determination about which presidential candidate to vote for. Is that right? Oh, wow. Um, and, and, st- and we don't really know m- much about what their plans are. Well, I guess we do. Donald Trump says he's going to repeal it, doesn't he? And, and Hillary Clinton, I guess, I, I think she said she was going to change it, but not get rid of it, right? Not repeal it. Well, ultimately, um, it's not the candidate's perspective we're most concerned about. We're most concerned about Americans in general. And what we know is that all Americans are concerned about access to affordable, high-quality health care. And no matter which candidate is elected, we believe that Americans will continue to push for that and solutions to that. Okay. And so the, the survey then should be something, and I'm not trying to play politics here, but regardless of who gets elected, the survey should be a resource so that they know, because ultimately that person in that office is representing the people. 
Well, I believe that an informed health consumer is the best partner that we can work with as medical providers to deliver health care solutions. And so we have, for 150 years, made, our hallmark has been listening to our patients. And this survey extends that hallmark to all walks of life, all corners of the U.S., to say what's important to you and what are your concerns about health. Once we understand the health consumer's concerns, we can partner with them to deliver the most appropriate health care solutions. Well, uh, tell me some of the other results on the, on the uh, survey. Uh, w were there particular illnesses that were of bigger concern than others? Well, Americans are unbelievably optimistic about the, the inroads we're making in all forms of disease, but Americans cited cancer. In fact, 37% of Americans cited cancer as their number one health concern, and brain cancer was the scariest form of cancer for all Americans. The good news is that we're making inroads into different forms of cancer. In fact, if you look at breast cancer, the five-year survival rate for all forms of breast cancer is now 91%. So prevention, screening, and ultimately treatment are really making a difference in treatment of cancer. And uh, we had a news story this morning about uh, naps. Uh, did you study any of the uh, sleep habits during the survey? We absolutely did. And what's interesting is in our first survey, we found that work-life balance was critically important for Americans. And actually, finding that right balance was challenging for them in being able to find healthy food solutions and being able to find time to work out. And in this survey, three-quarters of Americans were actually able to identify the appropriate number of hours of sleep that were necessary, that being seven to nine hours. But only 50% of Americans were able to achieve that goal 50% of the time. So work-life balance continues to be a challenge for health consumers, and particularly in getting enough sleep. Oh, man. That, and, and not bringing politics back into it, but with Mrs. Clinton's uh, pneumonia uh, story and, and the doctors that we heard about this morning saying that she needs more rest, that would apply to all of us, not just nighttime rest, but, you know, d d take advantage of your vacations and your weekends, etc. Am I right about that? That's absolutely true. And getting an appropriate amount of sleep has actually been linked to disease prevention, being able to... Um, fight diseases like hypertension or obesity, gaining enough sleep is critically important in those diseases. And certainly as a stress reducer, stress, excuse me, sleep is critically important. And so whether you're a presidential candidate or somebody going to school in the fall, yet again, sleep is critically important. What is the age that was included in the survey? So these were adults that were surveyed. Everyone from 18 to 65 were surveyed um, across all walks of life in America. And did, and did you find through your uh, uh, service in uh, the armed forces that uh, there was um, a healthier people that were in the military than aren't in the military? Well, that's an interesting question. You have to remember that um, during my time in the military, we were treating individuals anywhere from the age of 18 to 60. So it really varied from um, individual to individual. My time was spent in the submarine force, and you absolutely had to have individuals that were healthy before you put them underway in a submarine for days or weeks at a time. Yeah. So I represented or saw a very skewed portion of the military population. But I think whether you're in the military or you're an average American health consumer, making sure that you're healthy is the best way to fight disease. Uh, let me ask you if you could leave us with a website, um, simply because we're, we've run out of time and I know our listeners probably would like to know more. Well, your listeners can find more information at healthcheckup.mayoclinic.org relative to this survey or the prior surveys that were completed, or simply going to mayoclinic.org for terrific consumer-guided health information. All right, and you guys always give us some great information at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, Dr. John Ward, thank you for being on the air with us. Thank you for your service, and thank you for helping us understand our own circumstances. Thank you for that. Have a great day. All right, we will be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Variable cloudiness and humid on this Tuesday with a couple of showers and heavy thunderstorms in the area. Watch for flash flooding, the high 82 to 86. Partly to mostly cloudy Tuesday night with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm, low 73 to 77. Times of clouds.